In some traditions, a lifelong marriage is recommended. How is it in bhakti yoga? Spiritual teachings, it is stated that there is no divorce. You get married for the lifetime. That's how it, in, in, I was raised Christian originally, and that was certainly the teaching in Christianity. In the Vedas, uh, Bhakti Yoga, yes, that's the same. In, in the Vedic teaching, there is no divorce. You see, this is all modern stuff <laughs> that we've, uh, we've changed the rules because it wasn't convenient for us to enjoy in the traditional rules, so we changed the rules because we want to satisfy our senses and you know, have the freedom to do what we want to do kind of thing. Nobody tells me what to do. So out of that has come divorce. And then, of course, as we progress further and further, marriage is disappearing. And it's just, you know, find somebody, live with them until the, you know, the honeymoon's over, how many years or moments that is, and then move on, see. And this is what we've got, basically a throwaway society, you know, in every aspect of society. It's basically just disposable, you know. Well, this is not pleasing to God. What God says in the, in the scriptures, Bible, or, you know, the uh, Vedas or whatever, is his guidance. That's his teaching. This is how it should be. See, so if I want to fulfill my position as, you know, pleasing him and following his truth, then this is what I do. But the same teaching sh should go into the marriage itself. Not just leave it at the doorstep, okay, we can't ever divorce, we have to stay married till we die, you know, so we'll just suffer through it. That's not the teaching either. The teaching is inside this marriage, which we have chosen to engage in, we should live properly. And that is to base our marriage on service to God. That should be the reason we get married. That should be the first consideration when we go to choose a partner. How interested are they in spiritual life? Do they want to dedicate their life to making spiritual growth? Do they want to engage in a life that is guided by scripture? Do they want to raise children, you know, in this teaching of truth? So the children will grow up from the very beginning knowing who the supreme person is and who they are and what the, the goal in life is. See, these are very, very serious questions we should ask each other before we jump into this marriage, see. So if you do these things and it's, it's determined that yes, both of us are serious, we want to grow spiritually in this way, we want to work as a team, you know, and help each other, fantastic, it'll work. God's in the center and we're circulating around. That's a spiritual marriage, and that's the only marriage that's really successful, you see. The others, not necessarily. My parents were married for 63 years, you see. And uh, I won't say it was a perfect marriage by any means, but a lot of the things that they did or didn't do within the marriage was based on Christian teaching. I mean, it just was the way they were raised and the way they lived, you know, and I had that example. You know, they, they never even thought of getting divorced. I mean, it wasn't even, even a thought. You know, yeah, they liked each other a lot. But, you know, my dad would have never divorced my mom. I don't care what. Because he was just, that's not what you do kind of thing. You know. But now, like I say, you know, none of that stuff has any weight in our life. And so, you know, we get a very bad result from this. You know, kids grow up from divorced families, you know, you can't hardly even find anybody whose parents aren't divorced anymore. You know? A home is supposed to be a stable environment for a child to find real shelter and protection and feel safe there. You know, kids are actually, you know, <laughs> feeling love for both mom and dad, you know, they don't want to have to make a choice of who I go with or who's right and who's wrong, you know, and how much damage it does when the parents fight in front of the children and they see this, you know. All this is coming from lust. It is not as it's supposed to be, see. 
So we've taken a thing that's actually a spiritual institution, and you may have noticed that even atheists get married in church. You ever notice that? It's kind of like traditional, that you get married in a church. You may never go to that church before or after. But for marriage, you go there and have a big ceremony in the church. You see? Because it's, it's traditional, right? It's a spiritual institution. That's what it is. It's part of the divine system of coming together, a male and a female, and living as, as they should, providing uh, the opportunity to have children as they should be, and so on. So that's how it is. And the further we get away from that, the more problems we have. And we've gone pretty far, but it ain't over yet. We're still, you know, running far. Like I said, God's here, we're running, running, running. <laughs> get away from that. And we call it freedom. That's how, that's how covered our vision is. We call it freedom. We're running toward absolute bondage. You see, binding ourselves more and more by the shackles of lust and desire, and we call it freedom. All right, number two. What does Hari Bo Nitai Gore mean? Hari is one of God's names. It means to steal away, actually, it means to steal us away from illusion, to steal our hearts, you see, that are so, you know, owned by the world to steal our hearts and come to him. See. So anyway, Hari Bo, Bo means to chant. So Hari Bo actually means chant the holy names. Chant the names of God. Nitai means eternal and Gore means golden. That's what the mantra Nitai Gore means. The eternal golden. 